Welcome to the 44 plus one. This is session zero. Uh, would everyone here like to introduce themselves? Sure, I'll start. Uh, I'm Tao. I'll be playing. Uh, should we introduce our characters too? <laughs> <laughs> I've never done a podcast before, so. Well, I'm Tao. I'll be playing your resident rogue. Nice to meet all of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am Dan. I play Ian Ravencroft, the resident wizard. Catch me on Twitter at St. Jimmy Twin. Leggings. <laughs> nice what do you say? Well, I am Flink. I'll be playing Revel the Knoll, Knoll Bloodhunter. Yes, uh, we're using homebrew rules for that. Yeah. Omni, uh, hello. Would you like Hi. to say something or? Oh yeah. Uh, hello, I'm Omni. Uh, I'll be playing Caleb. Okay then. Uh, what about you, Bjorkus? Greetings. I am Bjorkus. I'll be playing Daisy Trions, a Jokarn, an artificer, obsessed with clockworks. All right, and I'm Quill or a Angry Kobold or. AK or Zach, whatever you want to call me. And I will be the DM. So in this session zero, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to clarify some things, uh, specifically uh, what the game's going to be like. I've talked about this for, uh, for a little bit with some of you. Mm -hmm. I've talked about how uh, I'm planning on, uh, for one thing, I'm planning on having this be a bit uh, a bit silly at times, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> for the most part, this is going to be a fairly serious campaign. There will be plenty of times where things will be humorous, and there might even be entire sessions devoted to a lighter tone. You know, whatever whatever is needed to make sure we don't take this too seriously. Yeah, well, as the Terminator once said, levity is good. It removes tension and the fear of death. Hmm. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> As for uh, the rules that we'll be going by, we uh, are using quite a few homebrew rules. For one thing, Flink is going to be playing as a knoll that will be using stats from the D&D wiki, not as in any official wiki. I'm referring to the homebrew wiki. Mm -hmm. I actually have looked... Also, uh, he's also going to be playing as a blood hunter, which is a class made by Matthew Mercer. So it's still third party, but it's arguably a step up from homebrew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in my experience, both I, the, the the race or the species and the class both seem pretty well balanced and, and a lot of fun to play. Oh yeah, actually, mm -hmm. I plugged the homebrew knoll into the race balancer, and it fit the perfect number. Actually, oh, ah, awesome. there's. There's an online homebrew balancer? Yeah, there's a thing that uh, calculates uh, mm -hmm. benefits and stuff and yeah. gives a number towards it. Well, that's fast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I should try and make some homebrew and put it through that. In fact, I actually I made have... a homebrew subclass once. I should put it through that. Ooh. I've done a lot of homebrew. I'm actually working on a Halloween compendium of homebrew. So I can, I'll link you the uh, race homebrew balancer when the session's over and let you take a look at it. You're all too advanced for me. I just make hundreds upon hundreds of monsters. <laughs> That's all I do. All right. So <laughs> I should also point out that uh, Bjorkus, your you Lady want? Triance, is going to be using some homebrew firearm rules. They are far more reasonable than the DMGs. Say again? Mm -hmm. They are far more reasonable than the GMG rules. And they're still a pain in the ass. I should point out that uh, in order to keep things relatively balanced in my eyes, as in it's not too much better than other ranged options, it's going to be a bit of a money sink. It is a money sink. I, it is also not very good. My range is 30-90. It's not that far. <laughs> that's, that's true. But still, that's you're going to need a tank, cool. so... You're not I, I, going I'm to be far away. Up, I'm going to be up front with uh, a pair of tonfas, so it's not that bad. 
Oh uh, yeah, Tonfus. We're using home I, I rules also, for Tonfus. A pair of them, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're light, they deal 1d3 damage, and they have a special property where if you hold I'm two of them... If, I were, if I'm wielding two of them, I can use my reaction to give me a plus one to AC. Plus two, I it's think. Plus two, I... Uh, it might be plus two. I don't, I'll, have to re I'll have to double check. It won't come up anywhere. Yeah. Now, as for uh, some other things that we're going to be doing, just so everyone's aware, I've mentioned this uh, on Roll20, we're going to be doing mm -hmm. milestone level ups. Woohoo! So we don't need to keep track of XP or anything annoying like that. I'll also be uh, giving out magic items now and then. Mm -hmm. I don't think that uh, I don't think I'll be rolling on any tables for that though. I want to make sure the party gets some good stuff and nothing too good for your level. I mean, winged boots are considered uncommon, which means theoretically speaking, a first level party could get it, and that would mean. A flying speed equivalent to your walking speed at first level. That's scary. That's still better than the Aarakocra. Indeed. <laughs> now, I, I'm not against the magic item roll table, but that is something that I'm a bit worried about. The balance is very poor. <laughs> yes. As for uh, other rules, let's see. What else? Huh. Well, there is the fact that we will be doing the classic how do you want to do this whenever someone kills a major enemy. Yes. Cool. Give you all a taste of power. Mm hmm I mm. love those rules. They're great. Mm-hmm. So, uh, oh, I'm, ju I'm just glad you're not using the optional homebrew wizard spell rule, which is hilarious, but also absurd. I'm not. I'm not aware of that. Spell points. So, um, you're familiar that a wizard can copy any spell that they have into their book, provided they have like the scroll and the money able to do it, right? Yes. This rule states that a wizard can take spells from other classes if they pay double the gold requirements. So, in theory, so just any spell in the game, like any spell in the game, but you would be spending like nine thousand gold to get true polymorph from the druid list. That's dumb. Wow. It is very dumb. And we're, <laughs> we're, we're scrapping Lady T's airship just to get true polymorph <laughs> for our wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Change of plans. You know, let's, let's, let's You're not, not getting that, that until mid-level, you know. <laughs> oh, thank Christ. Like, actually wizards have enough good That's spells. Wizards don't need any more spells. They already have all the best spells. <laughs> I know, right? I talked to you about this idea I had for a wizard character. I'm looking at the spell list, and man, there are just so many spells. I know. It's. I actually had a hard time choosing my first level spells because there are so many I wanted. Mm -hmm. But I decided that I got the Wild Mount book, so I want to use the new spells in there, so I did take one of those. Is that that gravity spell? Yes. That is the gravity spell. I was wondering about that. It is official 5th edition content, though, so... It's official. It is official. Mm, fair enough. Everything in Wild Mount is considered official, which made everyone upset when the Blood Hunter wasn't in it. Mm. <laughs> <All> right? <laughs> Very important. They're, they're in there as, like, a monster. Or the power that was, like, who, who <laughs> even gave the A-OK -okay of, yeah, do they have advantage on investigation and insight all right Seems so Sean. now let's uh talk about carrying capacity i've ah, yes i've decided that uh well i i mentioned the topic of variant encumbrance and i know at the very least flink wasn't a fan of it is that true oh uh, no I, I think it'd be all right i'm on board Actually, uh, pared down my inventory a little bit so that I wouldn't be encumbered. <laughs> I, I think I think one of you said that you were a bit worried about it. Uh, um, it depends on how much strength you have, of course, right? So, uh -huh. I mean, the character has um, enough strength to carry most of their stuff, but if I want, I'd have to like pick and choose or like throw out rations or something. Hmm. I'd rather uh, avoid the whole carrying capacity thing entirely. 
As long as, as, long as you know, it's like not like crazy, like you know. Got a statue or something. Basically. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is this is literally why instead of a spell book, I just have a deck of cards, and why I have a focus instead of material components. Hmm. It literally will save me twenty pounds. Yeah, I dropped a bunch of my torches. So I'm like, hey, who needs ten torches anyways? I got dark vision. It's fine. <laughs> uh, we're not playing Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Yeah. Yes. Uh, ha- as it was in the 44, uh, we won't be a uh, we won't be uh, keeping track of carrying capacity as long as it's not absurd. Just because there's hmm. no exact carrying capacity doesn't mean you can grab a building and walk away with it. Darn. Yeah. This is why we make. <laughs> this is why we make bear totem goliaths pick up the tavern. <laughs> Uh, Thinking like just happening. give him a block and tackle. I'm sure it's possible. Oh! <laughs> now, uh, w- does anyone have any uh, questions in regards to any of the homebrew rules we'll be using? Because I feel like I'm forgetting something. Uh, did you? I was gone for a little bit. Um, did you mention crossbow bolts and things like that? Or do you want us to count those? Uh, you'll definitely be keeping count of bullets. I'm looking at you, Bjorkus. <laughs> like I said, money sink. As for mundane ammunition, I'm a bit torn. I mean, you can always uh, say you get half your am- ammunition you use in combat, and half of it is just unsalvageable. Hmm, that's fair. At the very least, I'd like to know if anyone would be okay if we kept track of ammunition, because I know a lot of people don't. I'm fine with it. I I have a counting app just for that purpose, so I'm good. Good. Yeah, I'll keep track as well. Okay. Yeah, I can keep track. Yeah, my I, I have a dungeon master who keeps track of my gunslinger's ammunition very closely. <laughs> I wonder why. Now, <laughs> now, uh, okay. So we'll be ke- keeping track of ammunition. Anyone else? Oh, you know, speaking of um. Rules. I think I know we already discussed it in chat, but to clarify for anybody who might be listening, um, we're not using any special flanking rules. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. No advantage, no plus to hit or anything like that. Yeah. Cool. cool. I don't want to deal with that. I don't even know it that well. I find it makes me micromanage my positioning a lot more for my characters than they might reasonably. You know. Micromanage can be helpful, but it can also be a problem. All right. I'm adjusting myself in my chair. I'm hoping I'm not take, making too much noise. Anyway. Uh, you're all good. I'm sorry, Daddy. Did you say something? <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Has anyone uh, seen the berries? I guess th- this, this is game related, not a homebrew related, but for it, trap finding, since I'm a rogue, uh, do I use perception or investigation to find traps? Uh, depending on uh, the circumstances, really. If you're surveying a room, looking for trip wires and such, you use perception. If you're looking at a lock to see if it's poisoned, you use investigation. Okay. Investigation is about the little things, looking for okay. specific details. Perception is more about uh, understanding what's around you. Okay, that's all. Okay. Anything else? Hmm. I once took a look at XP to level 3's video on homebrew rules, and I agree with quite a few of them. I think they're good, but I'm not sure about all of them. I I do agree that we won't be having any mystics. Oh, thank God. Mystics are the worst. It's just too many things. Trying to be too many things. Then again, maybe uh, I could make a villain. Who's a See that, that's... bit of an asshole? I mean, it would send me straight to hell, but I bet I, I bet I could do it. You know? I heard. I mean, you could. You're the dungeon master. I heard we're being bad people. You need stat blocks. I've got hundreds of them. No. I've got one. Our thirteen spider. <laughs> that's always a fun one. What else? What else? Anyone else have uh, any questions, or can we get started? Uh, I think, think good. Uh, I'm ready. Uh, could you go over my character sheet and just make sure everything's correct? And uh, that's pretty much it, if you haven't already. Oh, I could take a look, sure. But yeah, other than that, I, I think yeah, I think it'll be fine. You might have to remind me on a few things, uh, but, you know, it's, it's D&D at the end of the day. Gotta yeah. be flexible. I'm assuming everyone has used point buy. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. I need more intelligence. Oh, very fun trying to balance that all out. <laughs> Never used point by before. I used point by and actually wound up at standard array. <laughs> and that wound up tweaking a little bit. <laughs> this looks it's like, ah, oh, this, this stat set is perfect. It's standard array. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, do you have all your starting equipment? I think so. It's just a broken sword hilt, a scholar's pack, and your spell book. Literally, I don't need much else because the scholar's pack comes with my rations and other important implements. Like, Don't you also start with a dagger? Or is that your broken sword hilt? Uh, it's honestly part of the backstory. He starts with it. Does he have a dagger? Eh, he doesn't use it. He just keeps it in the scholar's pack with... Like, I just consider that the knife in there is my dagger. Fair sword enough. hilt is actually my focus. I used the the, the general focus rules that it, it's basically enough. This is mostly because once I can get Shadow Blade, I will take it, and that will be my main weapon. Shadow Blade is an amazing weapon. Oh, yes. Especially if you're in dim light. It's so, it's so useful. Well... That's nice. Now that all that's out of the way, we should probably get started on the campaign itself. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this is going to be a bit of an end character thing. You'll be introducing your characters to each other as well as the audience. So, hmm, now that I think about it, how much do you guys know about your characters already? I know, uh, uh Tal, weren't, weren't you in talks with Bjorkus? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so your backstories are intertwined. A little bit. It, it, it's, a, it's a here and there thing. It's not really, like, massive. I understand. I haven't seen Tal's character's backstory yet. Oh, I don't yeah, think it's on there. It's my bad. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I can put that on there. But It's fine. Let's get started. Okay. So you're all in the city of Aurora. Okay. You're all there for various reasons, but you've all decided one thing. You want to be adventurers. This may be because you want money, or you want to help people, or some esoteric reason, or maybe a combination of those three, but you're all there for a reason. Now, the city is aware that the world needs heroes. You want to know why that is? Because the blood war is happening on Earth, or rather, Lorania. It's hell on Earth for about half the world right now, and a lot of people are worried about that. <laughs> Can't imagine why. No, I, I don't think it's a big deal. I, I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. don't, don't be such a prude. Nothing terrible happens, no. So, because of this uh, minor up. international issue, all the world's major kingdoms, uh, with the exception of Kamu, Kami's sort of doing its own thing. Everyone, aside from them, have banded together for the express purpose of making sure the world doesn't end. For this reason, there are a couple of strongholds keeping the Warring Wastes, as it's called, from spreading. If you look at the map on World 20, you will see Bastia, Tanir, and Amin. Those are the strongholds in question. Now, in order to uh, make sure that there are plenty of people going there, as well as plenty of supplies. All the kingdoms need to work together. Some provide soldiers, some provide ammunition, some provide other things that are needed. You know, like magic items in order to deal with all the fiends. Now, in order to make sure everything's running smoothly, people need things to get done. That's pretty obvious, really. So, in order to uh, incentivize people to start going out and fixing shit, the government of Aurora has created something called the Adventurer Recruitment and Handling Agency, or the ARHA. This is an official organization that recruits adventurers, gives them things to do, and then pays them for it. Now, I should probably point out that, uh, Bjorkus, I read in your backstory that you were given a letter from the king. Yes. I believe that's what we agreed upon. Yes, that's what I read. So. I can sure I'm not breaking any rules. Oh, it's fine. The letter was simple. The king wanted to give you a chance. He knows about what happened to uh, your own lineage. He knows that you've fallen from grace. And he wants to give you a second chance. 
an opportunity to uh, build yourself up again. In order to do that, however, you're going to need to prove yourself. So he wants you to report to the ARHA and get yourself recruited. So how about we do this one at a time? Uh, who would like to go first? I mean, I'm already started, so. Yeah, I like as well. Okay, then. How about you describe your character a bit? Lady Trions is a bit of an older woman. She stands almost six feet tall. She is about, she has this lovely, she has these lovely, lovely topaz eyes, and her skin is fading blue. She has this long, neatly kept gray hair, and these fancy clothing, and the sets, these sets of fancy clothes. Similar to that you would find on an officer. She does not typically carry much upon her, aside from their usual weapons and a bit of armor. However, what she does carry is this odd ivory horn and a small bag full of these metal balls. And a very strange mechanism that sits upon her chest. Hmm. It is not common knowledge what this device is, and more often than not, most people are unaware. She carries at her side these two wooden poles, often referred to as tonfas. They are not a common thing to find. She is a tiefling by nature, and she has these two beautiful horns that almost like ram horns. They curl back and then come back from underneath, stopping just, beneath, just before her ear. And these horns are gilded, much like a member of court or of nobility. Hmm. Okay, then. That's all I can give. Well, that's quite, that's quite a physical description. So we'll be doing that for everyone, just so you're aware, so that everyone knows what every character looks like. Just Hi. make sure it's not too verbose. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have a loud mouth. <laughs> session. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you are standing in front of a government building. In this particular district, there's a lot of governmental work done. And in particular, you're standing in front of the ARHA headquarters. This is where most adventurers get recruited into the organization. Would you like to step inside? Yes, she will head in, muttering to herself in Infernal. Hmm. Okay, then. Amongst other things. She uh, steps inside and uh, she sees a corridor which leads to a room uh, with some chairs and a woman standing behind a desk. What would you like to do? I will go up and speak to the woman. Uh, hello? Greetings. I have been informed by the king to enlist in one of your adventuring groups. And she hands her the letter. She, she looks it over for a little under a minute. And afterwards, she uh, looks up at you and sighs. <sighs> okay. Uh, you go through that corridor. She points to a corridor to your left. You take a left, and it's the first door on your right. Thank you, darling. And she will... Well, does she hand me the letter back? Uh, sure. I'll take the letter, and I'll head down the corridor, following her instructions. Okay, you go down the corridor. You take a left... And to the right is a simple door. And on the door is a sign that reads, Pilus, Head of Recruitment. Would you like to step inside? I will step inside. Okay, then. Inside, you see a man sitting behind a desk. Uh, this man is a bit old, uh, more or less your age, really. Tieflings and humans live similarly long lives, so... He is rather old. He is bald, and his beard is brown with some spots of gray. He uh, looks up at you with uh, world-weary eyes, and he says, Hello? Uh, are you here for an interview? Uh, are you Good. Good. Yes, I do believe I am. <sighs> okay. I have these questions here. And he sets aside whatever he was working on, and pulls out a piece of paper as well as another piece of paper 
alongside a quill. He starts reading off the first piece of paper, a uh, list of questions. What is your full name? I am Triance Asmodeus Jokar. Asmodeus Tricon. Okay. Uh, your age? I am 57. 57. Official nationality? What would be the nationality for a tiefling? Uh, infernal. I, I I don't actually know. You don't know? Oh, okay. got, you've got a lot, a lot of, so it's okay. a, lot of, a lot of adventurers don't know their nationality. You get a lot of orphans. Anyway, do you identify with any particular religion or creed? I am from House Jokarn. Mm. A now disassembled house. Okay. Is there any particular reason why you've decided to become an adventurer? He pulls out the letter. It is by order of the king. He glances at it and gives it back to you. Uh, what skills can you bring to an adventuring group? I am quite adept at surveying a battlefield. I am quite useful when it comes to patching up some wounded, and I am fairly good at dispatching of anything in my path. Uh, I was asking more along the lines of, uh, you know what, it's fine. Uh, let's see, let's let's keep this going, let's keep this going. Uh, do you have a criminal record? No, I do not. I'm a mem I was a member of court. Such things would be unprofessional. Okay. What's your general aptitude for mutual cooperation and following orders? I believe in order for everyone to survive, following orders is necessary. Okay, then. Okay. Uh, this is a short list, so any questions? When can I start? Uh, you'll get a letter if we accept you. Uh, it should be by tomorrow, I want to say. Oh, thank you. All right, you can head home now. And she'll head home, I suppose. Okay. So we've got one interview down. Uh, who would like to go next? I can take that. All right. Uh, how about you describe your character a bit, Dan? All right. So uh, he is a human. He's about 5'10", so on the lower edge of tall. He's got dirty, almost shaggy blonde hair and a very clean trimmed goatee. He's... You notice that his clothing is, it looks a bit more formal than the average adventurer. He's got the purple dress shirt and the vest on. He's got what would probably be close to black dress pants, but he's also wearing this green cloak with a hood. And the trim of the cloak is has a golden embroidery on it. Sitting on his shoulder, there is a raven, which every so often he reaches up and hand feeds the raven a little scrap of food from his small pouch. and. In his hands, he's also sort of shuffling around a deck of tarot cards. The interesting thing about him is he wears these glasses with round lenses. They're, they look to be made of red glass. You can't quite see through them, and it looks almost like, you know when a kaleidoscope shape sort of twists and alters? That's what the lenses look like. They're almost animated. Interesting. On his belt, there's the... Uh, hilt of a broken scimitar the sword itself looks like it might have been adamantine at one point but it was shattered a long time ago all right so you've stepped up to the arha headquarters is there anything uh interesting you'd like to do on your way to uh the office of pilus well um looking around the building and sort of taking note of the general activity is i gesture for my raven to lean down towards me, and I whisper something in its ear before it returns to a tarot card that floats out of the deck before going back inside. Hmm. When that's finished, I sort of brush myself off, making sure I'm somewhat presentable <laughs> before approaching the desk. The desk of Pilus? Yes. He looks up at you and says, uh, Hello, are you, uh, are you a spellcaster? I, I am. Ah, I knew it. Okay, uh, let me ask you some interview questions then. What is your full name? My full name is Ian Ravencroft. 
Mm. Age? 26. Mm -hmm. uh, official nationality? Official nationality? Uh, I come from closer to the Fire Fountain. It wasn't much of a village, just me family homestead. Okay, then. Do you identify with any particular religion or creed? None so much in particular. I know my family, they were deeply spiritual, but I didn't much look into it. They were all about uh, the honor of battle. Fair enough. Don't mind the question. This is just to make sure you don't any, get any... Uh, I don't want to... How do we put it? Uh, let's just say I wasn't the first person to work here, okay? Uh, uh, it is fine. Yeah, there is this orc. Uh, he uh, worshipped Grumsh. And mm. uh, he uh, went up to head of recruitment. He was an elf. And uh, that's how I got promoted. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, is there any particular reason why you've decided to become an adventurer? I, that is, my uh, family was a long line of soldiers in the making. Basically, every branch that my father's bloodline comes from usually went into the military. Uh, my father himself used to be a commander until he lost his leg, so he just stayed at home. My elder brothers, they immediately signed up for armed forces. They tried to teach me as well. I didn't quite make it to any of the standard weapons. I much preferred my magic, as it were, to sort of shore up where I was a bit weaker when it came to swinging a sword around. The only thing that was remotely close for me was my father's old scimitar. I left home early because I had a thought that I wished to run around and learn more about magic. I thought if I could buff myself up with spells, I might be able to stand equal footing with my brothers. Okay. I was, wasn't that far from uh, Fionn when they were, uh, when I received word that my entire homestead was destroyed as a result of the blood war. Mm. Mm. All, I could, all I could find in the wreckage was this, and I set the scabbard on the desk. You can uh, keep that. Uh, I don't need it. Yeah, I know. It's just to show you what it is. I figured if I were to travel around as an adventurer, and perhaps fight against the fiendish forces out east, I might be able to uh, keep what's left of my family going, and maybe I'll find a way to wield this in more of a wizard's fashion. Hmm. Okay, okay. What of course, failing that, I can set up a store. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'd like to... I, I, I have things to do today. I need to keep this going uh, fairly quickly. Uh, what skills can you bring to an adventuring group? Well, I'm um, very quick when it comes to uh, discovering new information that they need. I seem to have a sixth sense for these sort of things. Uh, I also have a variety of spells. I might not have very many, but they all fit a different purpose and can be used to great effect if needs be, both supportive and offensive. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Do you have a criminal record? Uh, I do not. What's your general aptitude for mutual cooperation and following orders? I will generally work with whoever I'm assigned to because it's probably better to stick around in groups. Okay. Any questions? Uh, none that come to mind. All right, then. We'll uh, send you a runner with a message whether or not you've been accepted uh, by tomorrow, I'd say. Sounds good to me, sir. All right. Would you like to just walk off? Uh, yes, I would. All right, then. Who's next? Omni? Flink? I'll go if you'd like. Okay then. Omni, would you like to sure. describe your character a bit? Sure, absolutely. Um, uh, so Kalis is like a about six foot tall half elf. Uh, he's got pale skin with a blue tint. He's got silvery white hair to the shoulders, and he's got like an average build. Um, he walks around with uh, medium armor, scale mail, uh, and he's got his deity's symbol on his shield. Um, it depicts a sunrise made of rose, um, roses, uh, red and yellow gems, uh, and also a, uh, a bright path towards uh, the morning sun. Hmm. 
Sorry, I'm drinking something. Okay. Would you like to do anything special before you meet Pylos? No. Uh, I'll just hand him uh, the letter I received. And uh, I'll let him know that I'm here to join. What letter? Um, received a letter, um, which is what brought me here. Ah, I see. He looks over and he says, Okay, so I'll just ask you the interview questions. What is your full name? Kalis Gren. What is your age? 36. 36, okay. Official nationality? I am a half human, half moon elf. Mm -hmm. Is do you identify with any particular religion or creed? Yes, uh, I worship Lavender, and uh, our temple is in Aurora. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes. All right. Yeah, the temple of Lavender in Aurora. I, I thought it was. I thought it was pronounced Lathander, whatever. <clears throat> oh, Lavender, my bad. Is there any particular reason why you've decided to become an adventurer? I believe this is the path my god wishes for me to travel. Okay, then. What skills can you bring to an adventuring group? I can heal wounds. Uh, I'm uh, adept at medicine and... Um, I can also, um, I can also play musical instruments. I can, um, perceive great distances. I can see in the dark. I can do many things. Okay. Do you have a criminal record? No. What's your general aptitude for mutual cooperation and following orders? It's, you know, part of any faith to follow the rules of, of the gods. So I think it, it'll lend itself nicely to the rules and regulations of this company I'll be, in, I'll be joining. All right. Any questions? No. Okay, then. Well, I'll send you a runner. Uh, tell me if you got the job or not. Thank you for your time, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. And then I'll, and then I'll take my leave. All right, then. Who'd like to go next? I'll go next, unless Tal wants to. All right, then, Flink. Right. Uh, describe your character. I think it should be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, my character's name is Revel. She is a knoll, obviously. Um, since we're likely in uh, daylight in, in a busy city, really the most you can make out of Revel is a uh, a tall, kind of broad-shouldered form, uh, strong and lean, relatively thin from what you might ex uh, thinner than you might expect, um, but cloaked from head to uh, to the to the very claws on the ends of her toes uh, in a in a dark brown cloak. Uh, it's pulled it's pulled tight, and the the hood is pulled forward so much that unless you get up close and take a good look at her, uh, it would be impossible to really identify uh, exactly what is going on underneath this uh, underneath this hood. Um, she's got a, uh, a, 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 a great sword that she carries around with her. It's, she grips it in her right hand and has it rested on her right shoulder. Um, it's a it's a fairly short kind of wide bladed implement, um, black steel with a shiny sharp edge on it. Um, but aside from the cloak, the sword, most of her form is obscured, mostly out of out of caution. Um, she knows that uh, she is not exactly welcome in this. Yes, city. that's that is something that we'll be doing. Uh, most races live in relative harmony, unless you're something very specific like a Yuan Ti, uh, which are not really uh, that common, and uh, the ones that do exist aren't really welcome. And gnolls in particular, uh, they're not like in, say, how they're described in Volo's Guide. They're not that bad. They're more like how they are in, I want to say, 3rd or 4th edition. Or they're at least playable characters. But still. 
And you can tell from you can tell from the way she walks that she's used to this. She she looks left to right as with 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 caution, with intelligence, with um, you know, surveying the area around her to see um to 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 get to 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 gauge the temperature of the uh, the mood of the people around her and see see how much uh uh offense may be yes, being raised. So many races live in relative harmony. That doesn't mean that everyone is accepted. And Knowles in particular aren't really seen as positive forces in the world. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to prove yourself to people if you want to be able to parade around your Noli self. Of course. So, as you uh, as you walk into the waiting room with the woman behind the desk, she looks at you and she goes, uh, "Miss, uh, could you put that sore away, please?" Uh, where do you want me to put it? And she looks around uh, for somebody to maybe a rack or um, is my um, my uh, halfling handler with me? Oh yeah, your handler. Uh, you can choose whether or not. He is with you. That's 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 how I want to do it. Uh, sure. Would you like to describe your handler a bit? Uh, sure. He's um he's an old halfling man. Maybe um oh in his sixties. Maybe maybe even pushing early seventies at this point. Um, short crop, gray hair, um, beard, mustache, everything, all the full facial hair. Um, he's got kind of warm but sad eyes. Uh, stands maybe maybe about five and a half feet tall. Um, in just casual uh, green leathers with white kind of linen shirt and pants on him, and uh, he's he 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 would be accompanying Revel, um, likely at her side, um, to kind of uh, uh, keep an eye on her and make sure that uh, nothing goes amiss. But uh, he doesn't look tense. He looks relaxed. He looks like he's done this plenty of times before. And Revel will extend her her uh, great sword to him and say, "Benny, can you hold this for me?" Uh, okay. He holds it kind of awkwardly because it's a great sword and he's a halfling. And he, uh, he, <laughs> he's sort of struggling with it. And uh, the woman behind the desk just looks at you and says, uh, I was thinking more of a sheath. Uh, whatever. Uh, are you here for an interview? She tries to look at you behind the cloak. Um, yeah, and Rebel kind of pulls the, the hood up a little more. <laughs> um, yeah, they um, heard you were looking for um, adventurers. Uh, adventurers, okay. Uh, that corridor to the left for storing your right. All right, then I'll proceed. All right, you step into Pilot's office, and uh, he looks at you, doesn't even flinch at the fact that you have a halfling struggling with the right sword, or the fact that you have a cloak hiding most, if not all, your features. He just says, uh, four in one day? That's, that's a surprise. Uh, hello. Hi, are you, um, what was your name? My name is Pilus. Pilus. Nice to meet you. And Rebel will kind of stand up straight. When she stands up, for, you know, at her full height, she's about 6'9", and um, she keeps the, the hood up, but uh, the end of this kind of like uh, dark brown snout uh, pokes out the front of it, and a few yellow teeth exposed. He doesn't, he barely even seems to register it. He just look. He looks completely unflappable. Okay. So I, I'm here to ask you. Uh, I need to ask some questions. I need, okay. I need coffee. Okay. What's your full name? The full name is Revel. That's it. What is your age? Uh, nine. Nine. Okay. Official nationality. Uh, uh, is none okay? Not applicable. Okay, don't worry. Get to, we get a lot of those. Uh, do you identify with any particular religion or creed? No, no. Uh, I don't do religion. Hmm. Okay then. Is there any particular reason why you decide to become an adventurer? Well, um, you could say uh, she kind of crosses her arms in front of her chest. Uh, you could say I'm trying to make a good impression, and um, it's, uh, I'm guessing it pays pretty well, right? So that's nice, too. Okay, then. What skills can you bring to an adventuring group? Well, I'm really good at um, 
fighting things, obviously. Um, I have a lot of uh, battle experience and combat planning, strategizing. I'm good at a lot of that. Okay. But, uh, I mean, honestly, let's not get around. I'm expendable. And um, good for m missions where you might not want to send somebody that uh, you actually value. Hmm. Uh, rarely do I see a barbarian that nihilistic. Okay. Do you have a criminal record? She's kind of grins. Uh, well, I guess it depends who you ask, but uh, I don't know. Aside from, I try not to get in the fights that much, but that's pretty much it here, at least. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. What's your general aptitude for mutual cooperation and following orders? Hmm. Um... I'm fine. I mean, I'm, I was a soldier and once a soldier, always a soldier. Right. But, uh, um, as long as I have some idea of what the orders are for, or what they're about, then I'm fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm do whatever you want. Is this going well? Is this what you wanted to hear? Uh, sure. Any questions? Good. Uh, oh, I know. I just asked it. Um, uh, when, um, when do you want to start? What is, uh, where are we going? What's this for? You'll get a letter uh, by tomorrow. It will tell you whether or not you got the job. Oh. And if you do get the job, it will tell you where you want it, where we want you to go. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll look at the my my handler Vinden and see if he's got any uh, input that I missed. So. All right. All right then, Revel. We're going home, I guess. All right. Okay. Can I have my sword back now? He uh, he fumbles it back into your arms. Palos just uh, looks on, uh, just looks back at his desk and starts filling out some more paperwork. Cool. Now, with my free hood, my, my hood back up, and I'll depart. Okay then. Uh, there's one last person we need to have interviewed, and that would be Tal's character. Okay, uh, at the front of this office is a tall, above six foot uh, elf with long, dark amber hair pulled back into a slight pony. Actually, no, it doesn't have a ponytail. <laughs> My bad. Um, he has amber eyes and slightly fair skin. He wears a coat with a, sil a silver trim around it and underneath you know, some protective leathers, and he carries around a jade amulet around us. Okay, then. Do you do anything special before you meet Pilus? Uh, as I, 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 like, walk around town, I'm just like, huh, that's new. Uh, interesting. Seems that a lot has changed over the years. And eventually he makes his way inside. So once you walk into Pilus's office, he looks at you and says something along the lines of, huh, five one day, new record. Uh, hello, you here for an interview? I suppose. All right, new record. <clears throat> what is your full name? Anelis Venren. A Anelis Venren? That's correct. Age? It's quite rude to ask an elf's age, but close to the second century. 200. Official nationality. Uh, high elf, if that is what you are inquiring. That's not what I was asking, but okay. Uh, I can give you my place of birth, if that's what you require. Where do you have citizenship? That's more or less what I'm asking. I guess it's now Sierra. Sierra? Yeah. Okay. Do you identify with any particular religion or creed? Um, n no religions, but I've worked with not, I wouldn't say creeds, but networks. Networks. Okay. I assume you're familiar with your Empire Kingdom's network before. 
Is there any particular reason why you've decided to become an adventurer? To give people the opportunities that they might not have if the world is to go the way it's heading. Hmm. Finally, someone that actually wants to do something about that. Okay, what skills can you bring to an adventuring group? I can scout ahead. I can quietly infiltrate and survey areas and, if necessary, quiet take down. Oh, oh, you're a rogue. Okay, okay, okay. I consider myself more of a spy, but Jim. That's very honest, sir. Uh, I was beginning to think uh, with that scouting description that you are a ranger. Those don't have a very long shelf life here. Anyways, do you have a criminal record? None that I know of. At least. Okay. What's your general aptitude for mutual cooperation and following orders? Well, job's a job. No personal matter should get in the way of the job. Okay. Any questions? What should I... I, I've talked to them in the past, but things have changed over the years. The current, your eyes that see into dark matters in the occult side, do they have a name by chance now? Excuse they, me? Have they changed? What are you trying to ask? I was, you probably don't know. That's fine. That, that, that is all. He takes a long sip of coffee and he says, <laughs> okay, then. Okay. We will send you a message. Uh, you can have it, send it to uh, Brady Trance's place. Okay. Well, uh, we'll send you a runner. I'll tell you if you got the job. Uh, thank you for stopping by. I would like to get back to my work now. Sure. All right. So that's everyone. We have introduced uh, everyone's characters, and now uh, we let the day pass. Pilots doesn't get any more visitors. Five in a day is a record. It's such a large day. <laughs> That's kind of impressive and surprising. Yeah. By the end of uh, the night, each of you receive a runner who stop by whatever place of residence you guys have. Uh, where do, you, where do your characters live in Aurora? Uh, Ian is literally sleeping out of an inn and tavern. He doesn't have a set home. He just kind of goes from place to place. <laughs> Sharia was her husband in a run-down manor a little outside of Aurora. So. You are the last one to receive a runner. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I got <can't... laughs> you. The rebel sleeps in a warehouse in the like in the corner of a warehouse that's used for a uh, um, uh, well, essentially smuggling goods uh, into and out of town. I get the last letter. No, he doesn't get it. <laughs> it must take time to find him. At least the warehouse <laughs> is inside of the city. Yeah, right, that's fair. And uh, I'll I'll be in the temple. Uh, that I've been staying at for the past few years here in town. Well, each of you receive a runner somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find. They're like the couriers from Skyrim. They just find. They know you. where you live. They bust oh. down the door. <laughs> Found you. Nice level scrying. Each of you receives a letter, and in that letter it says, "Congratulations, adventurer! You have been selected to uh, become an officially government-supported adventurer." You will be assigned to a manager that will be responsible for giving you missions and rewarding you once you complete them. Your manager has asked that you accompany him tomorrow evening at the restaurant known as Orcello's Palace, and underneath is a, an address which presumably is of the restaurant in question. And it has a signature, someone by the name of Rio. So you've all been accepted. Congratulations. And you're all going to be in the same party. How convenient, Tal. Seems we're in the same group. Amazing, right? It's almost as if I wasn't going to pair you off with random adventurers. 
It's almost <laughs> well, to be fair, I did tell you, I tell them that I was with you, so I assumed we would be paired. But that works. Hand me that. Kind of go out on the road. Hand me that small gear over there. Sure. Okay, so the next day, you guys meet up in front of a restaurant in East Aurora by the name of Orcello's Palace. It seems uh, fairly nice. Uh, I'm not sure if... Would, would any of you have uh, been there before? Brayon's probably has on a date. Depends what the restaurant's used for. Yeah, I've lived for a few years, I'd probably know. So, one after another, or maybe even all at once somehow... You all end up outside of the restaurant at around the same time, the time that you are supposed to meet your manager. Would you like to interact with each other a bit? So, well, uh, Ian's just going to take a look at everybody. Just... So, uh, I'm assuming you all received the same invitation? Yes, have. Uh, is Revel still wearing his cloak? Her. Hers, but yes. Cloak? Yes. yes. But uh, you can, it's it's uh, she has forgotten about it uh, just a little bit um, with this kind of confusion, um, looking at the the letter in, in her hand and the the name of this restaurant. Like, what am I doing here? Jaris is gonna uh, nudge Tal. I believe that's a mole. I haven't seen one of those in almost fifteen years. Oh, I miss how much fun they were. <laughs> Look it over. Hmm. Well, people come from interesting places. I remember how it was back in my back in my town. We used to have thirty or forty of them on guard duty at all times. There were no better capable fighters. Well, then that just makes it easier for us, doesn't it? Oh, it's a it's a pleasure, sir. I am Lady Treons. You are? Oh, uh, Ian Ravencroft. A uh, pleasure to make your acquaintance, ma'am. Gives you a very, uh, a very noble bow, like she is still a member of court. <laughs> it is very clearly practiced and routine. It is a pleasure, Mr. Ravencroft. Ian looks very confused at the formality and just gives like a very simple two finger salute, just right back at ya. <laughs> That's just how she is. <laughs> All right then. Would uh now that that's out of the way, uh, would you like to interact some more with each other, or would you rather step inside of the restaurant in question and meet your manager? I want to know if the pal is the uh, cleric wearing armor. Um, I did describe it. Yeah, I am wearing armor. Wearing armor. Um, too. I would talk to, or talk to who is who's ever close to me and like be friendly. So it's like, hello, I'm Caleb. Nice to meet you all. You? You're one of those priests of the thunder. My husband has talked about you people before. Very nice, normally. Oh, well. I didn't know we were so famous. Mm, my husband is an avid follower. I was by there once a week. She's also just being extremely nice to you, that's all. Wow, okay. I don't ruin the illusion. Yeah. <laughs> Be nice for now. I don't know what to believe anymore. Hopefully, you know, if I just pray to my God, then I'll know the truth. Oh, that's a wonderful but, way to be. Shreyans has with her this little box of the things. He's just keeping oh, it out. I, I... Sorry, what we. What did you say? Trans has with her this little box that is clearly full of something as it rattles around from time to time. Yeah, and I, I said that with a smile, like trying to, like, you know, it's like pretending to be like a suck up, I guess. <laughs> I suppose we should probably go. <laughs> like saying something ridiculous like that. I suppose we should probably go in and meet our handler. It would be rude to keep him waiting. Hey. Are you all, uh, are you here for, um, this dinner? The rebel will approach, but, yeah. uh, minus a greatsword. Uh, she was told not to bring a weapon to a nice dinner. 
Aye, that I am. But uh, what happens to be your name, uh, Big Miss? Uh, my name is Revel. What's who are you guys? All right, good. I'm, I'm Ian. Are we? That's a good question. Ian, okay. I am Lady Triance. This is Tal, and I don't believe we heard the name of this priest here. Kalis, nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. Yeah, nice to meet you too. I guess, uh, I guess we'll be working together. Is that the idea here? Would assume so. You are very young. You're, you're about average age for one of your kind. You look quite healthy. Me? Wait. You, uh, you're familiar with my kind? She'll kind of, she'll actually pull her hood back a little bit, and you can see the the, the face is uh, kind of a light brown fur with darker spots, rounded ears. And uh, lots of lots of teeth, but uh, kind of sharp yellow eyes. Some passers-by see this and start to uh, start to look at you strangely. Yeah, it goes back up. Familiar. Back in my hometown, we used to have several nobles on underemployment. That phenomenal fighters. If they weren't busy off hunting. That sounds about right. What was, uh, what was your hometown? One moment. Amra. We were a small town. Ah, okay. It was a lovely place to live for the, few, for the years that it existed. Mm. Not for this cursed blood war spilling into our realm. It really depends on what side of the coin you were. Indeed. Well, we should probably head inside. Our hands are might be impatient by this point. Well, if everyone would like to step inside, you like, you can. But before you do, something kind of funny happens. Uh, uh, the door swings open, and the sky is pushed out. It's a, it's a tiefling man, and uh, he's wearing simple clothes, and he looks really upset. Oh, come on. He, he grumbles as someone quite literally pushes him out. Uh, good sir. Were you kicked out for racial reasons? What? No. What are you talking about? Sorry, my name's Gome. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, as, as you, as he starts speaking, you notice that he, he smells really bad. Do I smell alcohol on him? Uh, not, not much alcohol. It's more like, uh, it's more like dank diseased sewer water. Oh. See, you're one of those people who works in the lower segments of the city. Huh, how did you know? Yeah, I'm a sewer worker. I, uh, I was kind of hoping I could, <laughs> you know, uh, grab a bite to eat before heading home after work, but uh, I guess not. Damn, one time I try and save up money to eat somewhere nice. Whatever. Did they kick you out because of the yeah. smell? Uh, hang on, I think I have something for that. I'm just gonna... I hover my hand over the deck of tarot cards, and then a card flies out for prestidigitation, and the scent of pine trees suddenly comes over him. How long does that last? It lasts for one hour. I admit that's definitely an interesting effect. Oh, man, that's, that's I, a strong smell. Well, it's a fair bit nicer than sewer water. I figure it'll at least get you uh, one meal. I hope so. Yeah, and if you, if if you like, if he's like covered in like filth, like I would just tell him like, hey, if you head to a temple, I'm sure they would a, help find you a bath. He's a as well. bit dirty. Why, what are you? There's many people that be willing to help you in this town. Thanks for this, but uh, I. I don't know. I think I think my mood has been ruined. I don't think I want to eat there anymore. Damn. Damn discriminatory assholes. Welcome to dealing with the fancier occasions. Only way you can get to anywhere in the world is working your ass off. My deepest apologies, but I'm afraid we must go in now. Yeah. Whatever. You can help out those assholes stay in business. <laughs> And I can just be sad and smell like pine 
Thanks. Well, have fun with that. He he walks he walks away, and you guys can step inside. While they're talking, Revel discreetly like tucks her head and smells her own self. <laughs> Make sure she's not too red. <laughs> You smell okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Like comparison or naturally. Anyways, as you step inside, <laughs> you can see it's a pretty nice place, actually. Uh, nice hardwood flooring. Uh, there are some paintings hanging on the walls. Uh, there's a band uh, playing some music. And there are plenty of people sitting down at some tables, uh, eating, drinking, and talking to each other about some such having a fairly good time and uh you can see there's a man behind a counter he says uh hey there would you like a seat we're here to meet someone oh 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 uh who is his name uh you know by you know uh man i forgot to mention it but in a letter there's the name of your manager his name is Kieran. oh i thought it was rio where did the rio name come from Wait, no, it's that's not how it's. It's not how it's spelled. Oh, Jiren. I I pronounce it Giren because it's that's spelled like here. We are here to see Giren. Ah, oh, Giren, Giren. Uh, he's over there in the back, and you see a, you see a halfling, uh, sitting uh sitting behind a table that's completely empty except for him. He wears simple clothes, and he has a fair bit of blonde hair and that uh, drapes over his head almost to his neck. He looks up at you guys and waves excitedly. Oh great, he's happy. Suppose that's what halflings are though. Tiny happy beans. So, uh, this guy seems what do you, <laughs> would you guys like to, uh, would you guys like to sit down with him? I suppose we'll go sit down next I, to one halfway. Oh, you're okay. Yeah, I'm gonna try and sit. There are just enough room for all of you. Oh, well, if there oh, was, was. Anirius would stand up and just lean against the, uh, the wall. Yeah. yeah. Looking incredibly awkward and uncomfortable, Revel will sit as well. <laughs> Where else will sit? Like, in a chair across from him? Ah, oh, hey, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Giren. Nice to meet you all. Uh, are you? Uh, he points over to Revel. Are you Revel? Yeah, that's me. Ah, Revel. I heard you were. Uh, I was. Uh, uh, t -t 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 you had a. You have a snout. I I heard you had a snout. Are you a tabaxi? No, and she'll pull her hood back again briefly, uh, just so we can get a look. Oh, oh, no. oh. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Put it back up again. Uh, it, don't, don't don't mind that. I I I just I didn't get a lot. I didn't get a lot of description. Uh, you are wearing a cloak. Uh, anyway, uh, how about you? Uh, your name's Ian, right? Aye, that's true. Uh, Lady Triance? Is is that it? Oh, uh, that is. Hey. She seems to be in the taste. She's probably just shy. Uh, but <laughs> hey, uh, Lady Trance, good to good to meet you. It's uh, I've heard that you're a uh, a noblewoman. Is is that true? Yes, uh, it is quite true. Uh, for her, at least she's just out of it. Yeah, Bjork Bjorkus isn't here right now. I sh probably should have. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I, I was a bit caught up. I didn't register it entirely. <laughs> you're, you're fine. <laughs> it's just all playing it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Analis, is is that you? Analis, yeah. Yeah, That's hey. Me. Good to meet you. And what about you, Kalis? Yes, sir. That's me. Ah, good to meet you. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, it's good to meet you all, of course. <laughs> um... So, I know I wasn't really supposed to bring you anywhere special. I was supposed to just meet you in my office, but, you know, that's boring. I, I'd rather, you know, talk to you guys face-to-face, -face, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Omigo to Omigo, as they say in Halfling, I think. 
Oh, shit, my halfling's rusty. Why Why do I not know halfling? I'm halfling. Okay. Uh, okay. So how about we uh, we order some drinks? Oh, is that good? That sound good? Aye. Okay. Uh, Something I'll, strong would be nice. I prefer water. I'll, I'll order some. I'll order myself some ale. So you all order your drinks. Uh, Lady Trance orders nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hand to my wine. <laughs> How nice of you. Anyway. So, uh... There's not anything for you guys to do right now. I'm just here to meet you all and try and get a good first impression. What, has, this, has this been good? What do you mean? This? You know, uh... How, how, Meeting at a restaurant? Yeah, I mean, I thought it'd be nice. You know? It is nice. Very unexpected. I mean, uh, I've not really done anything like this before. I mean, we haven't even really gone on a quest yet, and this is all new to me. I'm a bit more of a traveler, and I uh, I haven't really associated much with people, mostly because I don't really have time to talk to them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, hey, I'm also been a world traveler. Maybe we can compare notes. Well, that's that's nice. So... Wonderful. Can I ask you a bit about yourselves? Aye. So, Ian, uh, do you have anything interesting that you do? Uh, I like to fancy myself a wizard. Ah, wizard. Nice. Mm -hmm. As it so happens, uh, a lot of my spells come out of this deck, and I hold up the tarot cards. Now, what's funny is, uh, I came across this deck not long after I first started studying, and it I, I only know six spells so far, but they all chose themselves. No matter how much I shuffle this deck, I cannot pick one of my own choice. They all just sort of appear as I need them. And if I get a new one, well, it just sort of appears by surprise. Hmm. Wait, wait. Pierre. What does that mean? What does that mean that? I've also uh so you don't have any control over what spell happens it just kind of like happens not really it's all fate for me hmm oh although i do imagine that wizards can uh, they can purchase spells and add them i'm really curious to see how that works out ah, that reminds me of an old adventuring group of mine oh by the way this this isn't this isn't the first adventuring group that i've been managing him um, Another I one. Uh, so I was wondering. Another one came across the deck of illusions. That was fun. Oh my! What happened to them? Oh, uh, he, he sort of goes quiet for a bit, and he sort of uh, they they die. He puts That's his index fingers happened. together in front of him and just goes. He was a. Uh, they were uh, killed by uh, hell bears. Oh, oh! I was expecting. No. Nah, I know a lot of people are worried that uh, if they get signed up, they're going to be sent to the line, you know? That's that's why it's really important we get new recruits. And uh, I, I don't want to do that to you guys. I mean, uh, does that? I, I don't want to, I don't want to pull up the fast one on you guys and just send you out to die, you know? I... Oh, so we're not just a suicide squad. Not yet, anyway. In time, in time, I'm sure it will be a thing. But for now, we are dealing with the problems around here. Correct? Uh, I don't know. I, I think there's this mission that uh, I think I could send you guys out to check out. Uh, we're not sure if it's a major cause for concern right now, but it may be something that you guys are going to need to look into. And around this time, uh, a waiter stops by and gets everyone's orders. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, there's this problem uh, in a nearby town. Uh, you guys know Oakley? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've been through there. Yeah, something, yeah. something's going on there. Uh, something about the water, I think. Whatever, it's something to do, I guess. Poisoning? I, I don't think it's poison. I think people are just saying it's weird or something. I, I don't know. Uh, Anyway, there's there's not there's no guarantee you're gonna be stuck there, because right now there's 
there's no deaths. People aren't super concerned about it. Uh, if it gets bad enough, though, we may send you out there. Well, it could always be a cult. A cult? Why does it have to be a cult? There's many strange things. You never know. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Cults are a possibility, I guess. But still, let's let's just assume the best for people, you know? Anyway, um... I should probably point out that uh, I'll be paying you guys in gold, uh, mostly. That's that's what I'm supposed to do. But, uh, you know, I I feel like uh, if you guys were better equipped, you guys would do better. So I'm, I'm going to try and see if I can dip into some uh, magic items for you guys. Oh, fabulous. Yeah, um, I don't have anything to give you guys right now. But if you guys go out on your first mission and you come back, I could probably get you guys something simple. Like, uh, have you guys heard of, uh, there are these, uh, these little amulets, uh, Lady Treants, uh, what do you do? Lady Treants? No, uh, he's saying what? Oh, I'm sorry, it's... Oh, no, he's asking, oh, so he's asking me what I do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, for the longest time, I was a member of court. But for now, I mostly spend my time dealing with clockworks and helping the king of Aurora. I heard you were important. Uh, there's, there's this, there's this type of perfume I think that uh, can help you. I have more than enough perfumes, darling. Uh, however, I would like a specific thing if you are getting items. Oh, what's that? There are these devices in Para, known as. Firearms. Oh. I would like a longer firearm than the one I currently have in my possession. You have, you have a gun? Let's just say I pulled a few strings. Oh. The daughter marries a very nice nobleman. Firearms aren't my strong suit, but uh, I can see what I can do. Uh, you said you're into clockworks. Uh, I know there's this little amulet I could get you guys, probably. Uh, it's it's sort of a thing you use when uh, you're fighting and you, you want to make sure you hit or something like that. Have you heard of that? I believe I've heard of something. Yeah, I bet I could get you guys one of those. What do you think? That sounds great. Yeah, anything you can awesome. do. Awesome. I, I bet if, uh, if you guys last long enough, I could get you guys some pretty good stuff, you know? I, I've heard these things called... Uh, Alchemy jugs? Have you heard of those? I have. Yeah, we're... He yeah. has one, I believe, in our cellar. That's, that's a good source of cheap ale. I'm inclined to agree with him. Yeah, uh, or I could get you guys uh, those weapons. I think they're called plus one weapons for some reason. <laughs> You're just calling them plus one weapons after the game? <laughs> you know, I know exactly what you mean. Actually, there's something I've been looking for, if you wouldn't mind helping oh, sure, me. sure, sure. I'm going to reach into the small pouch on my belt and I take out my jeweler's tools. Well, I've been looking at potentially in the future making me own jewelry and selling it in a magic shop. So if you ever find a book on how exactly to do that, I'd be very much, uh, very much happy. A book on magic jewels? That sounds like something I... I'd find in Ciaro or maybe Para. Uh... Sure, I I guess I could look into that. It's nothing too pressing, but just if you happen to come across it while we're in your employ. Okay then. Your food arrives, by the way. Oh, excellent. Yeah, and if you're oh food. Uh, um, uh, if you're taking uh, requests, you can keep all the gold and all the items. But if you can help me get this off, I'd appreciate it. You should pull down her um. Uh, the, the front of the um, uh, cloak and reveal this um, silver collar. It's like a solid silver band that goes around Rebel's neck, just like kind of nestled up in the fur. It doesn't have any seams or any uh, obvious um, hinges or clasps or anything on it. It's just like a solid silver ring. What is that? It's... Mm, it's so... Um, it's so I can be monitored. 
where I go and what I'm doing. Um, if you know anybody who can, I don't know, help remove this or put in a good word, uh, that would be, that'd be appreciated. Can I take a look at that? Sure. And she'll lean over your direction cautiously. We're not adventuring today, oh, are no, we? No, you're not adventuring right now. Uh, I might need you in a couple days, though, or maybe a week. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. Eh, I'll cast uh, Detect Magic. De- detect Magic? Yeah, I think I have that. Oh, are you doing on the collar? Yeah, I okay. just want to know what type of magic it is. I'll cast Identify. And, uh, oh, yeah, that, that thing. Where is it? I apologize. Apologize if I put the DM on the spot here. I kind of made this thing up. <laughs> it's fine. You uh, you take your time. But as you're doing that, uh, Kieran says, "Okay, um, every couple of days or maybe a week or so, I'll send you guys a letter, and uh, I'll bring you back here, and uh, I'll tell you what you guys need to do. Uh, you know, uh, where you guys need to go." I mean, right now, uh, I'm thinking maybe uh, that thing in Oakley, and like I said earlier, <laughs> uh, or I could send you over to uh, maybe a. Uh, hmm, what are some other places a group of starting adventurers could go? Hmm. You know, that's a tough. That's a toughie. But in any case, I bet I could get you guys somewhere nice, other than uh, stuck in the line or, you know, in some crap hole village. I, I hear Oakland's nice. Okay. I don't, do you have that much sway to be able to choose where we go? Uh, just a little bit. I bet I could get you guys some nice uh, missions. Of course, it's a bit tricky at times. I mean, <laughs> it's a bit annoying. I mean, it means I have to, you know, pull some strings and do some favors, but I'm sure it's worth it. You know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to stick you guys with the crappy jobs, you know? Jobs that you know what that would pays us. I mean, honestly, uh, before I, I didn't, I didn't used to try that sort of stuff, but I remember, uh, ooh, I remember something rather silly happened. Uh, I kind of tried to, uh, send them over to, this place called Sini, because there there are some problems with the local wildlife. Huh. Yeah, things were getting rowdy because you know it's it borders the wild bogs and things get crazy there. You want to know what happened to them? They died. They they were killed by owl bears. Oh, yeah, you you mentioned no, that. no 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 that was a different group. Oh, we we have a really bad owl, owl bear problem yeah. here. I I mean, in the in the forest of Fion, uh, I I think there is, yeah, yeah. They died in the first group died in Fion, the second group died in Sini. So uh, things get kind of awkward. He sort of goes like a. Trance still oh. out. an elvish to um. An 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 Ellis. Yeah, can't pronounce the name. I believe there might be something of value in there. It's being protected by owl bears. Could be a sense of hypnosis. What do you mean? In Fion, they're just they're just sylvan stuff in Fion. Saying this in Elvish, does the halfling speak Elvish? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, crap. sorry. Oh, I, I said that. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh no, uh, Ian speaks Elvish, so he's just awkwardly listening. Actually, in. no. I, I think I think I think you're in Woods speak Elvish. Sorry. I I know Elvish. If you go back to just speaking via message. <laughs> <laughs> you should that would be a better decision. <laughs> Anyways, we'll just give out this big sigh. We really need to work on your app. Subtlety work. Well, if we do dispose, if we do dispose of the owl bears, we could probably do something like that. Sure. 
All their feathers and hide tends to be nice. Are you saying that out loud? Yeah, she's saying this out loud. It's still an elvish. Okay. I, I, I'm just speaking in common, because... Kieran... You see someone at this table at least speaks elvish. Uh, sure. You can do that. Uh, I don't think there's anything special about those elbers, though. I mean... If- and just in general, elbear hide and fur tends to make lovely coats. Nobles tend to enjoy such things. I personally never enjoy the taste. It's too strange. Yeah, I hear it's pretty gamey. It's comfortable during the we- during the winter, though. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's good for winter wear. But uh, yeah, if you wanna you wanna go out killing some owl bears, I bet I could get you something for that. Well, what did you have in mind? What did I you mean, whatever have pops do? up. I mean, who knows what will happen here? It's unpredictable, really. Okay. Can I ask you a question, Garen? Three. Sure. What do, you, what do you get out of this relationship? I get paid. and It's really uh, what I'm supposed to do. I get you guys missions. I, I pay you guys. I get paid. And also, we, you know, we hang out, you know? Uh-huh. I mean, come on. I don't, I don't want to... So... I don't want to seem like the kind of guy that just sends people out to their deaths. So I want to form a connection and actually mean something to you guys, you know? Okay, I, I guess. Don't, I don't think my other adventuring parties that I was assigned to liked me very much. That's kind of why I'm saying all this. Probably because they know that uh, their predecessors were killed by owlbears. Well, both of your predecessors have been killed by owlbears, so there's not much to it. Actually, I've had three before you guys. Did owlbears kill the other ones? Uh, The first and second ones were killed by owlbears. The third were killed by... Actually, it's a a bit ambiguous. Uh, I don't know what happened to them exactly. Uh, the most common theory is that they were killed by druids. Well, it appears you have a great track record. So far. Yeah. Are you sure Maybe it was druids owl bears? that polymorphed into owl bears? Mm. There you go. <laughs> I mean, they... All right, we solved the case. Where are the druids at? Up, Listen, I don't know. They they died in the wild box. Wild box. Yeah, it's the place where CR is. Oh. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, enough death. Let's talk about positive things. Yeah. Uh, Are you done, by the way? And I'll look at Kalis uh, with the detect magic spell. Uh, it's it's not magical. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's just silver. Does my uh, detect magic do? Does my identify spell do anything? Um, I would imagine not. Um, do you have the material components for that already? Uh, no. I, mean, you're well, Just, yeah. I, mean, I suppose I wouldn't. I don't have a. Oh. I don't have a. What's it called? A, a bag for materials. A material pouch. Gotcha. Oh. I was using that as my out to not uh, have to figure out if it was identifiable at this point. <laughs> I, I, I'll have to discuss oh. with AK afterwards. <laughs> I need to get material punch as soon as possible. I didn't make this difficult. Onward! Mm-hmm. Alright. <laughs> but yeah, it's if it's not magical, then that's fine. Yeah, so you have to detect magic now, I guess, but you're not seeing anything magical right now. Yeah, at least not on my neck, maybe. Okay, so I'll, I'll let him know that. I'll just say uh, I don't, don't detect any magic here. It might be beyond. Uh, I don't think there's going to be much use of magic around here tonight. I mean, unless the bards over there in the corner want to do anything special, but eh, it's probably nothing. And uh, mere seconds after he said that, uh, the door flies open. And uh, there seems to be some sort of big, uh, burly figure on the other side of it. 
He sort of has to squeeze through the medium-sized door in order to enter. Uh, you see, he's some sort of a... He's a big boy. He's a real big boy. <laughs> he's, he's reptilian. He's a sort of grayish in color. He uh, has sharp claws. And he smells faintly of foot fungus. That's gross. That's, that's how I best describe it. it. He smells terrible. And he looks over at the bar, the guy behind the counter, and he says, hang on, I, I wrote this down. <laughs> he bellows out, you think me smell too bad? Me think you not smell too bad enough! <laughs> He charges. <laughs> he charges him. I'm oh, he takes his. He takes his. Okay. Uh, roll. He's got to make a wisdom save. Uh, DC 15. Sorry. Hang yeah. on. I I didn't entirely prepare for this. Uh, but it's okay. charging through the front door. I don't even know how to pronounce my god's name, dude, so you're fine. He he rolled a 17. He he succeeded. He doesn't take damage. Nothing he, he makes his way through, and then he he slams his both of his fists onto the counter, breaking it, and the man behind the counter ducks out of the way. And uh, I'd like you all to roll for initiative. <laughs> because oh, just luck. because... This is session zero. Doesn't mean there isn't going to be fighting. Yes, did you want us to roll using roll twenty or actual dice? Either. Armor. That's how I want to play it. Okay, so in that case, I'll be using my dice for every roll in the future because that initiative was terrible. Oh my god! <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys are all in roll roll twenty right now. Yeah. All right. Something I I prepared before this. Here it is. This is where you're going to be fighting. Cool. Dungeon Painter Studio. Say again. This looks like it was done at Dungeon Painter Studio. Uh, actually, I made it in here. The wooden flooring was incarnate. Where are we located? Uh. Around Giran, you guys place your tokens. Definitely now I'm going to uh, I'm going to start recording this. Let's see, where do I? Well, I said I was blue, oh, yeah. so that kind of makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a splotch on the field. <laughs> okay. I prefer to be called a silhouette. My sir. apologies. The silhouette has appeared. Everyone be scared. Token. Oh man, where's my token? Oh, hang on. I gotta put my token in here, don't I? So. Oh, did my token not get added? Shit. I guess not. <laughs> Join me in the silhouette club. Hell yeah. Let's go. Ian Ravencroft, boys. Only cool people get to be a blue guy. <laughs> Ian's just kind of transient between the worlds right now. What's that plane called? The ethereal plane. The uh, yeah, there you go. It's been a minute since I read through some of these spells. I've been playing a fighter for a long time. Uh, offensive fighter. spells. No. Good old punchy boys. I've got like. Oh god. Wait, is that actually a troglodyte? It's a big troglodyte. <laughs> oh lord. Oh, <laughs> in my in my pub? <laughs> Not in my pub. I'm just a pull out his fist and start punching shit. Come on, keeper yeah. of the bar. Do something. Oh, this is great. Shout out to my boy Brandon for rolling a D100 for how many troglodytes we fought in the cave. <laughs> oh my god. That's how we rolled before. He split them. Just splits them between every room. 
I have no offensive magic. I left my weapon in the like, <laughs> Oh god. Uh am I sp I'll hang on. Uh, just uh, for a bit of a heads up. There's all this Wait. is basically a troglodyte just with beefed up stats. Oh, that makes sense. Great. Who's ready to get when did my let me check my spells really quick. Ah, oh, I'll be fine. I do have one weapon on me, but that's, that's about it. <laughs> for the sake of arguments, I'm right here. I sit next to my new friend, no, Revel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you just kind of peek behind me, you're like, oh, what's going on? I mean, you can just drag it to your cage okay. sheet on the map. That usually does it. Yeah, I can do that. Hang on. Drag uh -huh. my character sheet. Oh shit! How does that work? Yeah, it's like drag your name over. Oh, okay. Well, let's see how that works. Ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. Hey, you there we go. The mic. <laughs> this Which is... one's which? Okay, one of you is gonna have to change. Can I? Hey, can I just? Oh god. You can do. Where can I edit? Is there anywhere I can edit the image? Uh, if you go into your like, bio oh, and choose an image. And then do it again. It should show up as your image. I got it. Let me just find my character token for Ian. Open. Anyways, what did everyone roll for initiative? Six, five. Five. Seven, you rolled a six. Seventeen. Okay. So there you go. Okay. Twenty. Also, uh. Uh, Quill, uh, you can hit the uh, the clock and initiative will pop up. Yeah, okay. Oh, man. Okay, so I can't edit my token right now, which is awful. Yeah, and then and then when that pops up, you can click your token and then do initiative, but... Is there a way for me to delete my token on the map right now? You can just hit delete. Oh, okay. Shit. I'm roll again so I can. Oh, I'll edit it, but I'm not gonna accept it. Oh, there we go. And now I can just take Ian properly and put him. There, there we go. There's my boy. I don't know how to use the turn tracker. I apologize. Uh, you click on your token <laughs> and then you can click on initiative on your character sheet. Hang on. I'm messing around with this. Like so? I'm just going yeah. yeah, to oh, just cool. stick my HP and in you here. You can click uh, your initiative to change it to what you will. Oh, that's really neat. I like that. Okay. 8 is HP, First 13 day. is AC. Oh, shit. I gotta, I'll do my initiative again, I guess. Angry truck. <laughs> oh, oh no! Now are we gonna get a five again? Absolutely. All right, uh, we got uh, a <laughs> trance at six, revel at eleven. Oh, and now at seventeen. Uh, ah. who else? Uh, Kalis, what'd you roll? Oh, I got a 20. I'm putting it in now. Is it uh, Green's health, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, Green one's health. That's a health bar. I got that one. So the second bar is what I need to put the 20 in. Well, you can just click your character sheet and then we'll click on initiative and it puts you in the tunnel. Oh, well, no, you I have can, to reclick the initiative. I can't just add it on there. In the tunnel. Okay. And then, so then you can click on your initiative and then change what you had. No problem. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, so how do I do that again? Just and you click on your initiative. If it's in there. Okay. Oh, you're not. Okay. okay. So click on your token. Yeah. Yeah. I've got my token selected now, initiative. and then. And then whatever your first initiative. Oh dear God! Oh dear God! Hey, it worked. There you go. Okay. So. So 15, and I can change that. Perfect. I'm going to put it back to the 5 that it was when I started. 
and then you should be able to change the turn order to, turn order to descend down so it will sort them automatically gracious dm sick okay so is everyone uh is everyone yeah okay so let's let's begin uh top of the turn order analysis it's uh Kegos. oh really uh, yeah so you can click the uh there you go. thing yeah there you go right mm -hmm. so i'm gonna i'm gonna move 30 feet which is right here i'm gonna try and uh talk to him and like hey what hey what's going on um is there anything <laughs> who I can are help you with? asking The troglodyte. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the logic behind this is, but okay. Uh, kill one this man mean. What happened? He sent me out because me smell. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, I have a few friends here that might be able to help you with that. If you don't mind, we can probably change, you know, the scent and make it so it's time for you to be in here. Would that work for you, uh, person behind the bar? This man not get forgiveness. He only get death. No, no. <laughs> yeah, that's a troglodyte. I assume that's my turn. <laughs> I mean, is that my anything? Turn? Talking's of reaction. Or can I hit him? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I guess I was trying to persuade him not to murder somebody. Is that a thing I can do? He, can I try to persuade it's, him not it's to? It's going to be really hard. Okay, I'll still try. Because he hasn't, he, he only, like, hit the furniture, yeah. so he hasn't, like, hit him yet, so... One, not bad. Not good enough. I don't know. Yeah, right, I, well, I tried. DC 25. Sorry. Sorry, your efforts were. <laughs> it's okay. Cool. All right, then. Hey, Nellis, it's your turn. <laughs> he will simply tend towards the halfway. Does this happen often? No. I've never seen this before. Come on. Just do something. Oh. He'll pull out his longbow. And everyone just get down. I don't want to accidentally hit someone. As ah, he begins shit. to pull back an arrow and will wait for either someone to get closer or if uh, he starts, the trog starts hitting the man. Okay. That's my turn. Okay then. Revel, it's your turn. Um, you're looking around at the others, uh, I guess we have to do something about this. <sighs> and she'll stand up. Do I, um, do we see truck lights around town normally? No, this is a weird thing that's happening. Okay. No, I should have brought my sword. She'll stand up and, uh, start to close a different distance. Five. Oh, can I go? Mm. It'll count as difficult yeah. terrain. Yeah, yeah. It would, Just jump over the table. It would, it would look Fine. really cool, though. You can squeeze through uh, this commoner's space. He'll let you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, pardon me. Pardon, pardon me. me. I, don't pardon think it's, me. I don't think it's because he appreciates it. I think it's because, uh, no, thank you. He doesn't want to deal with an old. So, yeah, <laughs> I, guess, uh, I don't know. Maybe about, uh, I guess probably about here would be the limits of my movement. Actually, uh, where did you start again? Here? Uh, here. Yep. One, two... Three, four, five, six. Yeah. I'll take one more. Uh, your movement's thirty feet, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Unless, um, yeah, I wasn't sure we were considering moving through this guy's space difficult terrain, but uh, um, 
I gotta square up with the chocolate. I just with my fists because I don't have anything else on me. You gotta go, buddy. And uh, um, I'll hold. Um, I think to hold a grapple action. Or um, oh. the trigger being if he takes aggressive action towards me. All right then. The trog attacks. He attacks okay, well, you, Revel, since you're the closest. Oh. Excellent. I will take my shot at him. Okay, then. Roll to hit. 18. Ah, that hits. Oh. And uh, you get sneak attack damage, obviously. 16. 16 damage total? Yeah. Wow, what did you roll? Uh, a maximum damage on my longbow and mm-hmm. five sneak attack. Nice yeah, roll. Okay. Yeah, it was You're really fine, nice. Dude. Good <laughs> job. Good job. <laughs> now oh, he's going man. to start uh, rolling to hit Revel. Uh, you say, "Hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter right now. Whatever. He's going to start attacking. Ah, uh, that's an that's a one." Now uh-huh. it's two claw attacks. That's a 22. It hits. Right. It's a uh, four damage. All right. You're getting lucky thus far. And 18. That also hits. For five damage. Ooh. You said both with claws, right? Yeah. This is just a beefed up Troggle Day. Okay. And by beefed up, I mean he has an extra point to his strength modifier. So oh, he hits a bit harder. I don't want this to be too hard. This is an introductory thing. All right. The Revel is still standing, but uh, uh, two swipes from those claws would have uh, probably torn most of her poor cloak to shreds and done quite a bit of damage to the uh, flesh bee. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Anyway, uh, you say you wanted to grapple him? Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll use my um, my prepared action to uh, do a grapple against him. All right, uh, what's grapple again? Is it is it trying to meet uh, AC or? No, it's my sh- uh, contested. Uh, it, it's con- it is contesting athletics. Okay, he could use acrobatics if he'd like, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 24. Ooh, 24. I, I, I got a 16, Ooh. so you nice. grapple him. I snarl at him in response to the attacks of, and, and lunge in and uh, just try to grab his arms and restrain him. You are successfully able to do so despite his struggling. He says, mm, Stop! Now, uh, since it's the end of his turn, we'll uh, have these commoners here uh, step back, trying to put some distance t- between themselves and him. One, two, five, six, seven. The barkeep runs all the way behind you guys because he's a coward. <laughs> What a what a lad! <laughs> no, I get an opportunity I attack. Mean, <laughs> oh, <it's not> <laughs> I didn't realize cowardice was met with death where you were raced. Oh, speaking of, I'm not to hang God. Okay, Trance. Oh, he it's wants the bar turn. now. I want to shoot the trog, but I have a feeling I should probably go up here and help the, uh, no. So I'm gonna go up here and cast Cure Wound. Okay. You roll for that. You get six hit points. Revel gets six hit points back. Ian, it's your turn. Thank you, Revel. Ah, perfect. Um, I just kinda scoot here. And this ugly boy like, alright, say that, you look kinda like a frog. I've heard people fry their frog legs before they eat them. I don't really think I'm going to eat you, but I'll give it a shot. What? 
That's just a hell of a sentence. Oh no! Is, is, oh, is, only yeah. one. Did I hit? What's that supposed? Uh, I'm I'm sorry. What was that supposed to be exactly? A firebolt. Oh, okay. <laughs> or, or, or what I was saying. Roll to hit. Right. Okay, I'm assuming quickly. you're gonna take the top one there. Oh Jesus Christ! I don't know how this works. It's what a... the fuck? What the fuck happened? What? Oh ah, whatever. Oh. Whatever. I did. I hit twenty three. Does that hit? Yeah. That, yeah. That and, hits. Then, and then that hits. you can uh, click the spell name underneath the hit to uh, roll damage. Whatever. And this will just be easier. Four fire damage! Mm. Wow! <laughs> Man. <laughs> Good old fireball. That is. Oh. Oh, oh the macro's broken. That's weird. There we go. Ah, uh -huh, you fool. Uh -huh. I have done the impossible and drew the right card. I believe in the heart of the cards. Oh god, how many Yu Gi Oh references are we gonna get? <laughs> the way oh, was oh, not enough. Fire. It's gonna be a daily occurrence, dude. We play for Shadow Realm. That is here. literally my whole turn. <laughs> Galus, it's your turn. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, into melee. I have enough room for that, I assume. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm gonna go right there. And um, it, he's grappled, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna just hit him with the mace. Okay. Like, hope Paul's the only one who's unarmed. So, alright, I can explain. <laughs> but, uh, I had the mouse over there to just I'm leave it. I'm, I'm sorry, what's. Hang on. Oh. Oh, um, you rolled a seven. It sure did. Yeah, yeah that's it. My strength is really high, guys, so. Would be very, very good here. Okay, is that it? Y yeah, that's fine. <laughs> hey, Alice, it's your turn again. Um, does it still seem hostile? Yes. All right. Uh, I will take another shot at them. Twenty for you. Nice, nice. And seven points of damage. Seven? Yeah, in total. All right, not bad. He's 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 looking hurt. He, he looks like he looks like he can't take much more. I'm just gonna shrug back here, and that's my turn. <laughs> okay, then Revel, it's your turn again. Okay. Um, feeling a little rejuvenated from the the, the healing I received. Um, Revel kind of like shake out her rough. You can see she's got like a, a red crest in her in her uh, in her fur along between her ears, disappearing back beneath the cloak. She's gonna shake it out and then <sighs> lunge forward and bite him. Ooh, bite the troglodyte. Okay. Let's, where is that? Oh, it's an eight. Uh, that misses. Darn. That means it's time for Angry Trog's turn. Now, he's... Damn, I, I'm not familiar with the grappling rules. Uh, his speed is, I believe, zero until he breaks it. Yep. Anything else? Let's see, it's a condition. It's a... Let me look up condition. Gotta make a uh, strength check to escape the grappler. Yeah, yeah. And it consumes his action to do so. The grappler's incapacitated. Wow, grapples are kind of lame. Yeah, it's that's yeah. the next one that usually goes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to move it into restraining, so I just left it right there. You can, like, drag him somewhere. Yeah, I guess you can, but mm -hmm. it's not your turn right now, so he's going to attack back with no penalties, because grappling is lame. <laughs> and he's going to I'll roll... Use my... I'm going to roll a d4. If it's one or two, he attacks Revel. If it's a three or four, it's Kalis. It's Revel. Okay. I'll use my, um, Blood Curse of the Eyeless. Oh, what to impose a, a, a uh, uh, impose a, um, a, a, a 
a deficit to his attack roll, uh, equal to my my hemocraft die. So one d four for whatever he he rolls on his I guess first strike here. He just rolled a seven for his bite. Oh, a seven for his bite. Oh shit! I kind of forgot to. You're supposed to roll a con save at the start of your turn because this is a troglodyte we're talking about. Okay. It's not a big deal, but let's see. It didn't really affect your turn because you missed, but uh, let's see. 13? 13 succeeds. Okay, bullet dodged. Whew. Now, let's uh, again. That's an 18 minus d4. That's a 14. Okay, unfortunately, it only applies to his first attack, um, oh. unless I amplify it, which I don't have the health for. So okay, I'm going to wind up taking that hit. That definitely hits. Yep, and four damage. All right. And 23. Ooh, that hits good. Five damage. All that is exactly the hit points I had left. Uh, so um, from the second uh, claw attack, uh, Rebel will uh, release her grapple on the uh, troglodyte and kind of stumble backwards, uh, maybe kind of into... Uh, uh, into Lady Triance here and uh, uh, fall unconscious. The troglodyte cackles in glee. And now it's your turn, Lady Triance. He's further than five feet from me, so I don't have disadvantage. I'm going to look at him and say, Smile! Is a 13 hit? No. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. my, my shot goes into the wall. And you just hear this loud crack like lightning. And Ian, it's wind. your turn. Shit. Ian? Ian, you have yourself muted. I don't know why I was muted there. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. I'm just going to roll my... I'll just do that. Ooh. That's, that's good. <laughs> gonna firebolt his ass. So, what are your crit rules? Is it the standard double the dice rolled? Yes. Fabulous. You gotta love. Ha! Ooh. You gotta love. <laughs> you gotta love rolling all those dice. And you kill him. How do you want to kill him? Okay, um, one of the shots goes right into the center of his chest, and it looks like it's, yeah, the first shot goes into the center of his chest, and it looks like it's, because I'm, what is it, one bolt or two bolts did you want to do for the damage? Well, technically it's one bolt that deals double damage. Okay, okay, there yeah. So the bolt goes into his chest, and while it first just seems to bubble and burn, the added power of the crit causes the heat to expand his chest and his ribs just kind of explode in a fireball. Ooh, man. Yeah, that that makes quite a mess. I press to digitate the mess. Good job. <laughs> it is clean. <laughs> the barkeep gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> I'm going to heal the hole. Okay, you do that. And, uh, as you go and do so, you notice something. You get four health. I think you're conscious. The the body of the troglodyte seems to uh, seems to darken, like uh, the hue of its scales are darkening and darkening until eventually it becomes completely black, and then it starts to morph, and then the blackness seems to sort of ooze off of the troglodyte and leave it golem, spelling faintly of blood and pine. Oh, shite. No. It's, it's the guy that smelled. I, I, so someone I, else, I'm going to go back to my meal. She just goes right back to eating. <laughs> Do I see where the ooze <laughs> went? I mean, technically, you just you just killed someone <laughs> because he's dead. Is because this the dead. example? Yeah, this was the uh, the sewer guy. Yeah, and his chest exploded outwards. 
It's pretty unsightly. I mean, they'd ask him to stop. The barkeep runs up and says, Jesus Christ, is it? Sorry, Christianity now exists in this world. <laughs> oh, crap! Paladin's got a lot more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> By the gods! That's, that's that smelly sewer worker. What the hell, what the hell happened to him? And why does he smell like pine? Oh, that was me. <laughs> when he left the pub the first time, I just kind of made gods. him smell a bit better in case he that's, wanted to try again. Smelly but sewer. he left in a rather hell, frustrated hell fashion. To him? And he came back as a troubled like and wanted to kill me. That's, that's going to be bad for business. Okay, then. Uh, uh, it's not the first time things like this have happened. What are you and talking he about? Came back as a troubled I didn't wanted to. Kill Surely there's that's, been more people like this who have just come in and caused a ruckus, right? I mean, I haven't had any trouble okay, this far, and I haven't been as big as that. Uh, I mean, and, uh, no troubled dice have been here, and even if they did, they weren't that size. That's that's what I'm trying to say. No troubled dice have been here. I haven't had any this far. I haven't been as big as oh, that. So I'm pretty sure that uh, the black uh, goop I, I mean, uh, around his body no isn't have been supposed here. to be there and either. If they did, yeah, they worked uh, outside. Yes. That's, yeah, that's what I'm that trying to say. That black goopy thing no has disappeared. Uh, does Who cast a detect magic again? Uh, I did. Somehow not the wizard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Out of the corner of your eye, you see this. Uh, does Who cast a detect magic That same magic black goopy stuff. It looks like it sort of a, uh, sort of like snuck out the door. Uh, out of the corner of your the eye, door. You look. This... And that I'm same gonna black pray for guidance on myself. It looks like it and sort I'll... of a, uh, sort of like snuck out the door. And um, then I'm gonna chase after it if it's still running, if it's like moving away from us. Uh, roll perception. Oh. And the OAS will simply look over to the halfling who's just watched all of this. I'm I'm going to stop recording because I don't plan any other encounters. Uh, roll per- I suppose this is our first job then. Uh, what? Let's say uh. So it's an eighteen. We go with the first one. Eighteen. Yeah, that's not good enough. Sorry. The uh. Whatever that was, it's long gone. What type of magic was it? It was a bit hard to tell. It looks like some sort of a. It, the tech magic would tell what it was. I mean, it was clearly magical, but how does tech magic work exactly? It what just tells it? you the school of magic that it's from. Hmm, that's tough. I would say it's uh. Hmm. Transmutation. Yeah, it's probably transmutation. Some sort of transmutation thing. Well, this is all going on. Revel's coming back to consciousness and standing up and like, it's like I'm okay, I'm okay, and trying to like pull her hood down, but it's just gone. <laughs> the Garen, cloak is just shredded. Garen <sighs> just says, "What the hell was that? What? Sorry, guys, but that was a little hectic. Uh, sorry, I couldn't do anything, but." You guys, uh, you guys piss off any other troglodytes? Not that we're aware of. Good, good, good. Uh, can I ask why the hell that troglodyte's not a human anymore? I mean, fuck. <laughs> can I ask why that troglodyte's a humanoid now? Instead of some sort uh, of uh, lizard uh, thing? Uh, I... Cast detect magic earlier, and I was still concentrating on it, and it it showed that that there's some ooze um, that ran up the door, and I couldn't find it. Ooh. It was a transmutation spell. I've never seen the like of it. Huh. Okay, that's 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 something I could keep in mind. Okay. So, uh, good dinner. Uh, can I? Uh, excuse me, uh, barkeep. Can can we get the check? The barkeep says, uh, "Okay, you want to clean up this dead body first? Uh, aye, that would probably be good. Um, 
I will very. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to drag the body with my very low strength. Let's see how this goes. I will assist. You get advantage. Oh, ex- excellent! So how the first one? Oh, go? needed it. Needed it really bad. Holy crap! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna watch for a moment with all of my strength, and then go like finish the food that I didn't get to work on. <laughs> so you start dragging the body. I have no idea where I'm bringing this to. I think just outside. We're just gonna make like a snail trail of blood, and then you know, get it outside. <laughs> Maybe. You know what? What I'm it. I'm, the barkeep says, "You know what? Screw it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send in some guards to clean this up." Just, uh, I sure, probably sure. I'd love to. Have- Look, you guys oh. already helped. Just actually, hang on. He uh, he fishes through uh, the other end of the bar, and he pulls out a bag. Here, uh, take this for your troubles. Inside is uh, fifty gold pieces. Damn, that H. Woohoo! Yeah, it's not much. We are rich. You know, I could have died. So, uh, hey. Yeah, I mean, so I could have like... totally destroyed you as you ran past me, man. You got to pay attention. <laughs> That's 10 gold pieces you each, guys. Five gold pieces from the back as you say that. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 45 whoa. gold pieces. That's nine gold pieces each. Uh, excuse me, barkeep. Uh, what's your name, sir? Name's Trevor. Ever. I'll remember that. Yeah. Cool. Give them for their foolishness. Uh, I I do apologize ahead of time. I do apologize for their misbehavior. Eh, It's not a big deal. I've I've had worse here. And Garen Garen Uh, runs up and says, All right, everyone. That was a a good test run. I know you guys can fight. Uh, How about I uh, send you guys home? Does that sound good? Whatever fancy gets you. Let me just finish my... Hey, that works. We don't really really get to eat, per se, but, you know, I I, I think I'm good. I mean... I mean, technically... (laughs) I've lost my appetite with all this blood. Yeah, I'd lose my appetite, too. Uh, Especially, uh... If, uh... (laughs) Especially if uh came from a big troglodyte that's not a troglodyte anymore. Yeah, I don't know. Is this technically a homicide or what? Like, what would you even categorize this as? Because he was a troglodyte trying to hurt people. I don't know. Are we allowed to do this? It's classified as a community service. We were defending a member of the community from a hostile entity. There is nothing that'll be. There is no harm that'll befall us. In particular, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fair, I guess. But uh, you guys will be going out, making sure things go well in the world. But uh, for now, I don't have anything for you guys. If you guys want to head home, that's just fine by me. I, that sounds good to me, lad. I'll mm-hmm. do some work. Hmm? How much money did he take out again? So it was fifty, five. like minus five. It's twenty. It's nine gold per per person now. Oh, feels bad, man. <laughs> so feels nine bad. gold is so much money. <laughs> Could have been ten though. How many arrows? How many? Oh, wait, if there are any arrows, are are there arrows left from the ones I shot? Hmm. Let me roll for that. I think you only shot one, right? I shot two. I'm gonna get that back. You get one back. I got one back, yippee. How okay. many did you shoot? Two? Shot or two. One? two. Oh, okay, my bad. I think one of them two. is still embedded inside of Gomp's dead body. The other one fell out as he transformed back. I do like when she just glossed over the loud thunder that came from her hand. The firearm. They're probably not common. Yeah, my ears are still ringing. Yeah, that was right next to my <laughs> head, wasn't it? Yeah, so I was still yelling. 
You were unconscious. You're fine. Just get a magic... I was down at that point. You're right. Get a magic silencer. Oh, there you go. Why don't you just oh, put yeah. a bottle on the end of it? Well, I'm going to finish my drink oh. and my meal, and then I'll Rebel will come join you guys. It's kind of lipping towards the group. Next time I'm bringing my sword to dinner. Oh. I always bring something along. All right. I've learned it's best to be armed during every situation. All right, guys. Uh, uh, this has all been great. Uh, how about I? Uh, how about I pay for it, uh, the expenses? That sound good. I just, that's very kind of you. Uh, I thought that was the plan the whole time. What? I was supposed to pay for this meal? J- just a little bit. Just just a bit. I, I know this place is kind of fancy. That's here. Okay. I'm very confused. Trayons will look at the uh, barkeep and say, I do apologize for your woe. I seem to have missed my shot. Yes, you did. It's an easy thing. It's easy enough to fix. Just get someone in here with the ability to mend wood. It's not too difficult. You'll never notice it's there. Mm. Someone that can mend things. Uh... Like the mending cantrip. Do you have the mending cantrip? No, I do not. <laughs> I've got spare the dying. <laughs> I've got spare the dying in message. Kieran says, spare the dying? Man, that's that's not very good. Just just get the healer. I guess, uh, I, guess I can fix it. And the and, and eyes will walk up to the wall and cast minor illusion to make the wall look like it's there. <laughs> 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 That's amazing. How did you do that? Maya. Here, I'll make it better. Sure I'll use my uh, arcane tinkering to put a little picture there. It'll, it'll be the, just gonna. Yeah, might as there well. There are some, there, there there are are some paintings <laughs> hanging on the walls. Yeah, there is now a painting there, a different painting of the troglodyte. <laughs> there you go. There covering you go. the hole. And that, that will stay there indefinitely. The, You'll uh, never know arch. that there isn't a hole there, or is a hole there. It'll just be a picture that's stuck on his wall forever. <laughs> it's a picture. Of, it's a picture of a troglodyte that's permanently there. Good as new. Until I cast, I can have three effects. Currently, one of my effects is being used as a picture on a wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It seems uh, fate has brought a powerful group of heroes together. Yes, I mean, this seems to be the correct path for me. So, before we end the session, because there doesn't seem to be much else to do, uh, does anyone want to do anything? Yep. As part of my background, uh, I will put out whispers of G- G- Gnome. I-, I don't. What was his name again? You're talking about uh, something you found in Wildemont, I think? I, I meant the tiefling that left, the, the one that became a troglodyte. Oh. Yeah, that guy. Gome, I think was his name? Yeah, his name was Gome. Gome. Um, I will simply just put out a message of just tell me everything you know about the guy. What do you mean? About it. Just where he lived. Where he worked. Now I'll use criminal contact as a spy. So weird. <laughs> and just ask well, him. There wasn't much to him. People don't know much about him. He was just a guy who worked in the sewer. Okay. That's just curious. I don't know if I got a lot of time. His only crime was being kind of smelly, a little angry, and turning into a troglodyte and trying to kill someone. Yeah, that's not much. Mm. He should have just taken a bath. Fuck. He was on his way home from work. Don't be so <laughs> yeah. rude. <laughs> I mean, if you want to be certain that he said, I can walk outside and put a bullet in his head. Wait, what? You're shooting the dead body? 
I said if I mean if we're concerned about more of these things coming or that he might come back, I can go outside and shoot him <laughs> for no particular reason. I mean, there's nothing magical about his corpse. So it's not gonna be fun to shoot him. Ugh. All right, mindless destruction. It is. Um, I think that we should go check out the sewers and see if that odor came from the sewers or this black ooze. He had the odor before the black ooze. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but I'm, it could be like a slow burn or like a, it might like take a while. Like the smell could be like worse because of the ooze, I guess is my mindset. So I, the idea is to, I wanted to go check out the sewers either way. So. We should probably look in there to see if something's going on. It's something you could, you could look into. But uh, for the time being, um, it might not be something that Giran wants you to do. You know, Yeah, uh, it's too late now. He doesn't, want his, he doesn't want the adventurers he's managing to just go out and look for things. Even if it's seemingly important without express permission from the ARHA. There might be owlbears in the sewers. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to end badly for us. We're going to die in owlbears. <laughs> job as a spy. Yeah, Just don't investigate it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you guys can investigate it on your own time. Just don't tell Giran. That won't be a problem. <laughs> Has been a problem for me. All right, so I think that's, I think that's about it. Do you guys? That's where you want to end. Yeah, that's about uh, all that I had planned for session zero. We got to know our characters. We got our current uh, setting established, and uh, what's going to, uh, what uh, the the party is going to be doing in the future and we also established a bit of a plot hook so i think that's pretty good what do you guys think yeah i think that's that's pretty good yeah i got my first game jitters out which is helpful (laughs) i had quite a few of that too (laughs) was even prepped for a voice yeah i was like oh we're doing this now okay (laughs) (laughs) no one expected us to get into combat at the dinner but I have it set that Creance is always carrying her firearm on her at yeah. all times. Oh, man. She's always uh, got man. one shot. I, I, I don't mean to get... Sorry, I, I, I'd, make, I'd, make a, I'd make a political joke, but I, I don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. I, I'll make it after we stop later. recording. How about that? There we go. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks for watching 44 plus one session zero. This was quite a bit of fun, kind of stressful, but uh, I uh, I hope you all had fun with it. Yeah, good times. So I had a lot mm-hmm. of fun with it. Thank you guys yeah, for thank, watching. Thank you all for watching. Yeah. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.